this sky, look at this world, look at the boys, look at the girls. Sneaky dinky doo da morning. Morning, 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 morning. The air is fresh, brisk and sweet. Why I could even smell your feet. It's sneaky dinky doo da morning. Touch you there. Sneaky dinky doo da morning. Sneaky dinky doo da morning, 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 morning. I want breakfast. Have some bread. Can't live on that, the Bible said. Sneaky dinky doo da morning. Sneaky dinky doo da morning, morning, morning. Sneaky doo da morning. Sneaky dinky doo da morning, morning, morning. I feel oh so neat from my armpits to. So bad, it's the greatest time I've ever had. But it's an inky dinky doo da morning. Inky dinky doo da morning, morning, morning. It's not her fault that she's not sound. I think the devil's got her down. But it's an inky dinky doo da morning. Inky dinky doo da morning, morning, morning. Inky doo da morning. Inky dinky doo da. It's an inky dinky doo da morning. Inky dinky doo da morning, morning, morning. Inky dinky doo da morning. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Morning, 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 morning. Horror House on Highway Five. A horror film truly ahead of its time. Horror House on Highway 5. They were young and in love. He was crazy. She was dead. You know Jason in Friday the 13th. Now meet Bartholomew. You, you can't be dead. You can't be alive. Watch this film or die. It's only a movie. It's only a movie. Remember, it's only a movie. Glass <laughs> House on Dead End Street. Rated R.
Brigade? That's right. I take away curry after the pub. Yeah, four pints of beer, a chicken madras, and a horror video. Exactly. Blood and tits. A few scares, a few thrills. <laughs> Nothing too demanding. But I did everything you wanted. This wouldn't frighten a four-year-old. I'm telling you, it's crap. It doesn't work. It's rubbish. Yeah, better luck next time. There won't be a next time. You had a golden opportunity and you blew it. You'll never work for me again. I'll make sure of that. If I were you, I'd get a proper job. You're finished in the film industry. How do you know it won't sell? I put everything into that film. You just can't write it off. Don't tell me my job. I know what's commercial, okay? Bloodstream stinks. I'm not wasting money promoting it. But what about my share of the profit? I've lived on peanuts for three months. What am I going to do for money? That's your problem. You've wasted plenty of mine. I can sue you. I've got the contract. You won't get away with this. Have you read your contract? Of course. Do you have your copy? Yeah. Give it to me. You really should read all the small print, you know, before you sign it. Yes. Clause 27 states, if at any time I am not satisfied with the progress of the production, I am entitled to amend our agreement or render this contract null and void. That's just what I'm doing. This is now worthless. No! You bastard! I've got what guts to for you! Bloodstream's a bloody good film! Get him out of here! No, you, you can't do this! No, you lying bastard! I'm never going you want me! You can't do this! No, you lying bastard!
You were right. It's a bloody good film. They could make a fortune. You really are a bastard. When you arrive here, please telephone my office to arrange a meeting to discuss the financial arrangement. This film rubbish. Get rid of me. Oh, send it back or we'll just throw it away.
excuses, I've got contracts in every English-speaking market ready to buy bloodstream. I'm in business to make money. I'm not running a charity here. That's a lot of cash. If you can't get the prints ready in time, I'll just have to use another lab. It's as simple as that. Okay. But remember, that doesn't mean next week. I want them tomorrow. Okay? which I'm sure will interest you. About bloodstream. I can help you, Alistair. Oh. Do you know the bar on the corner of Connaught Road? I'll go there straight from the office. I'll expect you to be waiting for me. Please. What can we do? I'm not sure yet. But I'll keep in contact. I've watched William King manipulate and humiliate two new people. Double your money within two months. You know I'm right. Besides having a commercial movie, you've got a great poster design. The Bloodstream campaign works. Over 20,000 tapes have been sold in Canada alone. The movie's an established hit in Europe as well. Why hang them over the price?
all right. You're dreaming. They were burning me. King was there and his wife. They were all there. It was just a bad dream. They wanted me to die. Don't let him get to you. I'll put a tape on. Bloodstream is going to be my big break. After film school, I drifted from job to job for 12 years. Then along came Bill King and offered me the opportunity of a lifetime. I hate the bastard. Just be patient. You know they say revenge is sweet. You smoke too much. I think he's downstairs. Come on down, I've got some dictation. Have you got the contract for Path to Hell yet? They're still being drawn up. For Christ's sake, I should have had them yesterday. Get off your ass and go and get them. And if they're still not ready, breathe down Sydney's neck until they are. And don't sod about talking. Come straight back. I want to see that artwork you've been fasting round with. going for a day or two. Great. Thanks. But first, you should watch this. Go on, put it on. I've been doing a little research. Miss Judy Brooks, your favourite actress. I hate the bitch. her real name. Before King got hold of her, she was Linda Rawlings. She was basically a high-class whore who happened to fall into King's greasy hands. Talking with a producer definitely helped her career. I 
give you eternal life. No! You send me to hell! he's made it as an actor. His real name is Kevin Bilton. He started in porno rubbish like this. King put him under contract, gave him acting and elocution lessons. Neither worked, <laughs> but that doesn't really matter in a King production, as long as he does what he's told and struts a lot. Then there's Simon. both know what a little shit he is. Being King's brother-in-law is giving him illusions of grandeur. Together with his more than healthy interest in the female anatomy, he's not a very pleasant person to work with. And, just like the others, he is literally owned by the man. His job, his house, even his car. They're all supplied by William King. much about his wife, Sally. She used to be a model, but gave up her career to dedicate herself to King. Their daughter, Lisa, was 19 last month. A Torian, like you. She's following in her mother's footsteps, helped, of course, by Daddy's contact. <laughs> Her modelling career, her new flat, both made possible by William King. A man who seems to gain enormous pleasure from controlling other people's lives. You've been busy. Now I know about them. What about you? I know nothing about you. What do you want to know? Anything. Where you live? Why you like me? There's nothing to tell. I'm just an ordinary girl. But I do love you. I didn't know I could sew. Perfect. Look. 
the angel of death. How much longer? We'll just have to wait for the right moment now. Sally, I'll be away at a video convention. Oh, have to be careful. Don't you have a housekeeper? Just a woman who comes in to clean on Mondays and Thursdays. I'll bring the food. And I'll supply the champagne. Are you sure Sally won't be suspicious? Why should she? We'll go in separate cars. Who's going to follow us anyway? I'll have to be back by Sunday afternoon. I've got an early morning call on Monday, and you know what this new director's like. I won't get my lines until Friday. Learn another cottage. Oh, no. We'll have better things to do than that. Well, I've already told Sally I'll be back late Sunday. Take a script to read. You'll be alone for a change. And it sounds like I'll need a rest before I drive home. Maybe. Well, I don't intend playing Scrabble. I can't wait. See you on Friday, darling. You haven't lived until you've tasted human flesh. for the worthwhile people like yourself. Join me for dinner, or tomorrow you'll be the dinner. Like it? What is it? Well, what part of the body? Rum. My dear, you're eating your husband's ass. <laughs> what crap. People's faces. I won't come back to your flat tonight. Not until after the weekend, in fact. I'll phone you with the final detail. Now, what do you want to eat? It's my treat. Drink your wine. Cheers. I 
hang around for a decision. No, I'm leaving the office in a moment. You're holding me up. No, not this weekend. I'm sick of your excuses. No, no, I've told you I'm leaving the office. I've more important things to do than see you. You're on your own, son. I can't help it. It's your problem. Piss off. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. We'll sort it out next week. I'm off. I'll be late in on Monday, okay? Yes, Mr. King. If my wife phones Nikki, I've left for the video convention. Okay. during a session, but your father asked me to ring you. It's rather urgent. He needs to see you tomorrow. Why? What's wrong? I'm sorry, I don't know. He just asked me to arrange for him to call at your flat tomorrow morning. Hold on, I'll check my bag. What time? Okay, thanks, okay. Bye. going out. Important, is it? Yeah, well, he is the boss. I'll be in. Oh, that's all right. Cheers.
I know, I know. No, I'm working out, that's why I'm breathing hard. No, you have to go on your own. I'm sorry, but Bill King's calling round. I didn't know till this afternoon. But it's not my fault, is it? God knows. Well, if you're going to act like that, I don't know when I'm going to see you. Wait here. Fight women, Hagen. Your mind strike. I'll rip your throat out. No weapons. A fair fight? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
see you. What are you talking about? Come here now. It's nearly two. What's gone wrong? Nothing. I killed him. I don't like being on my own. I'm frightened. No, Alistair. I mustn't see you yet. I sleep. I need you here. Just think of what that pig's done to you. Yes. When will I see you? Tuesday, Wednesday, Whenever it's safe to meet. Now try to relax. Yeah. Good night, Alistair. Good night.
I'm here, you stupid mutt. Thank <laughs> you. 
Quickly. movie you'll ever see. Watch the screen. 
This is real horror. Nothing's faked. I didn't have to worry about censorship so I could do anything I liked. Look at the screen. Don't miss my finest work. You told me I'd never make a good film. Greg's last performance was definitely his best. Very convincing. Sit down, King. I don't want you to miss anything. Your daughter died beautifully. Such a pretty girl. She could have gone far. If only she'd lived a little longer. Don't leave. The best is yet to come. Simon's murder was particularly nasty. Befitting one of the cheap videos you've made so much money from. I think you'll appreciate the tastelessness of this scene. It's such a shame your late wife couldn't watch this with you. Or indeed your faithful dog to curl up on your feet. I thought I might be going too far killing the dog. But I just couldn't resist the visual effect. Judy proved a difficult subject. But I silenced her forever. I'm sure you'll agree that that was a superb display of screen violence. But the show's over now, King. You're not going anywhere. You're finished. You'll never cheat anyone again. My God, you're insane! You, you need to shut up. It's too late to say anything now. You're the one I really want to kill. Sit down. I'll give you anything you want. Money. Anything. Alistair, I'm so... <laughs> Mutilated bodies. After the massacre, he shot himself with his own revolver. No one can be certain of his motives. It appears after leaving his office early Friday afternoon, William King systematically called on those closest to him. The police have not yet released details of their murders, other than they were all of an extremely sadistic and violent nature. We have with us in the studio today Dr. Roland Cleave, who is researching the effect of media violence on society. Dr. Cleave. Why would a successful businessman who has made a fortune from distributing films with both violent and pornographic content commit such atrocious crimes with no apparent motive? Well, continual exposure to violence can, in certain cases, trigger off seemingly pointless acts of aggression. Often a person can be quite unaware of the subconscious effects and then suddenly turn into, shall we say, a Mr. Hyde character built up over the years watching these sick and depraved films. Surely it could be argued that violent films could satisfy one's aggressive side. It's true that Alistair. pornography can prevent certain people committing sexual offences. You are brilliant. Without this outlet, who knows what... It's worked perfectly. The police have been at the office all day, and they don't suspect a thing. How do you feel? Good. And what did you think of your check? 
What? Haven't you opened your mail yet? Look. What? It's yours. I changed the contract. There's no clause 27. This is just the start. With all the publicity bloodstreams getting, you're going to make thousands and thousands. Alistair, we're going to be rich. Why did you do this? It's all right. Who knows? They're all dead. I've put the new contact in the safe. It's the perfect plan. We'll be able to leave this dump. I told you to burn that. You just wanted the money. It's our money. We earned it. You're just as greedy as they were. You don't think I did it for the good of my health, do you? But I thought you hated them. I did. I thought you wanted them dead. You fool. You were supposed to destroy this. If anyone gets hold of it, we're finished. Leave that alone. For God's sake, it's over now. With the money, you can make other films. When we're married... I've made a great film. Everything in it's real. Listen to me. Sit down. I'll help you. You want to burn everything. You want to burn me, like they did. I don't! I want to help you! No! I... You just want to burn me! No! Let me go! I don't want the money! I don't want anything! Just let me go! till I get out of here. I'm...
Thank you ever so much for watching another fine late night feature. I hope you enjoyed watching as much as we enjoyed showing it to you. Right, Lightning? Oh, sure, Lightning enjoyed showing it to you, too. <laughs> That's it for me, Joe Bob Briggs, reminding you that I didn't fight my way to the top of the food chain to be a vegetarian. Did you guys hear the one about the guy who decides to get a facelift for his birthday? He spends $5,000 and he feels really good about the result. And on his way home, he stops at a newsstand and he buys a paper. And while he's there, he asks the sales clerk, how old do you think I am? And the sales clerk says, I guess around 35. And he says, I'm actually 47. And he feels really happy. The next day, he goes to McDonald's for lunch and he asks the girl who takes his order the same question. And she says, I don't know, about 29. And the guy's very proud of that and he says, I'm actually 47. And then the next day, while standing at the bus stop, he asks an old woman the same question. And she says, I'm 85 years old and my eyesight is going. When I was young, there was a sure way of telling a man's age. If I put my hand down your pants for 10 minutes, I'll be able to tell your exact age. Since there's nobody around, the guy thinks, what the hell, he lets her slip her hand down his pants. 10 minutes later, the old lady says, okay, I'm done. You're 47. The guy's stunned. He says, that was brilliant. How did you do that? No lady says I was behind you at McDonald's. <laughs> Joe Bob Briggs reminding you that the drive-in will never die. What's the difference between a G-spot and a golf ball? Man will spend hours looking for a golf ball. What's the first thing you know? Old Jed's a millionaire. <laughs>